open your bibles to isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 all the way to verse 31 it said has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint the lord bless his word in jesus name they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to speak briefly on the subject, the purpose and power of fasting and prayer. It is important for us to know the purpose, the power. of fasting and prayer fasting and prayer is a strong spiritual weapon of very high physical impact very strong spiritual weapon of very high physical impact it was a spiritual weapon well known to the giants of scripture it was well known to people like Elijah people like Moses people like Joshua people like Daniel people like Queen Esther the disciples Paul the Apostle and of course our master Jesus what purpose does fasting achieve and what power does it deploy Are we just trying to carry out a yearly religious obligation? Because our church fasts and prays every year. So I'm part of the fast and the fast and the prayer every year. Is that what we are just at, at, attempting to do? Hallelujah. In almost all religions, there is fasting and prayer for one thing or the other. But it's just religious. It rarely produces anything. So as a child of God, in the year 2019, as we get set for another year's fast, what purpose and what power do we expect number one the securing of divine intervention the securing of divine intervention in situations where it will take God the fast is needed 
in securing the securing the securing of divine interventions situations where a turnaround is needed the fasting is necessary in second chronicles chapter 15 from verse 3 if you read second chronicles 15 he said now for a long season Israel has been without a true God that was in their days and without a teaching priest and without law but when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him that is what fasting does we seek God he was found of them now what was their situation verse 5 and 6 told us and in those days there was no peace to him that went out not to him that came in but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries and nation was destroyed of nation and city of city for god did vex them with all adversity since they did not care for god there was no teaching priest there was no law there was no god but in their desperation they sought god and god showed up in situations where divine intervention is needed where divine intervention must be secured the first is the way number two the averting of impending destruction the averting or aversion the averting of impending destruction danger or disaster where destruction that appears to be coming or danger or disaster must be averted fasting has the power and the purpose to make that happen I am talking about situations where life and destiny appear threatened where a man's life a family a society a community appears to be under a threat fasting and prayer as we say in medicine is indicated is necessary a wicked man by the name Haman plotted to wipe out the Jews from Persian from Persian Empire and a lady by the name Queen Esther in Esther chapter 4 verse 16 engaged the weapon of the fast he said go gather together all the Jews that are present to shun and fast ye for me neither eat nor drink three days night or day I also and my maidens will fast likewise and so will I go in unto the king which is not according to the law and if I perish I perish and she never perished when danger seemed to be approaching the fast nullifies it maybe you did the people repeated negative prophecies repeated negative dreams and revelations you know there was a challenge where Nineveh had God released his judgment upon them in the book of Jonah chapter 3 verse 4 and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them for the word of for the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying let neither man nor beast head nor flock taste anything 
let them not feed nor drink water that is animals fasted but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto god yeah let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands who can tell if god will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not and god saw their works that they turned from their evil way and god repented of the evil that he has said he will do unto them and he did it not this was a situation where the fast cancelled a threat cancelled danger in our country today there is no time we needed to pray and fast like now threatened by several things insecurity all manner almost on a daily basis text messages enter my phone from people brother kidnapped sister kidnapped little girl this that all manner i received one distress call this today young lady coming i think from the east or so kidnapped somewhere young lady later on rescued by an old woman around the okene side or so all manner so when when danger is looming the fast is needed to avert disaster we are about to step into election season we are going to pray and there shall be no disasters in jesus name number three it is the securing of divine intervention the averting of impending destruction danger and disaster the expediting or the acceleration of prophecy fulfillment the expediting or the acceleration of prophecy fulfillment the acceleration of prophecy fulfillment in, this, in the situation where prophecy must be forced into fulfillment or where prophecy is being delayed and the delay must be arrested a fast is in order am i communicating Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 Daniel proclaimed the fast in the first year of his of, of, of the reign of, of his reign I Daniel understood by books the number of the years where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem that is the prophecy came through Jeremiah that 90 years is the number of years that the people of God will spend in Jerusalem after 90 years they are to be released and the 90 years had come and it looked like the prophecy was being delayed so daniel engaged in a fast so that the prophecy will not be delayed in luke chapter 24 verse 49 jesus told the disciples to tarry in the city of jerusalem until they be endued with the power from on high and in acts of the apostles they went and tarried in prayer plus or minus fasting until the day of pentecost came in first timothy chapter 1 verse 18 first timothy chapter 1 and in verse 18 he said this charge i commit unto you my son timothy according to the prophecies which went before on you that you by them might war a good warfare so we war with prophecy war at the place of prayer we war at the place of fasting so that prophecies can happen so that the enemy can find this level am i communicating at all first Kings chapter 18 verse 41 you remember elijah elijah prophesied i will read all the way to from verse 46 and elijah said unto ahab get thee up, eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance of rain so ahab went up to eat and to drink and elijah went up to the top of the camel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees he told the man 
rain is about to fall but he did not go home to sleep he put his head in between his legs in the prayer position and he said to his servant go and look toward the sea and he went and looked and he said there is nothing and he said go again seven times all this while he was praying interceding and generating the cloud of the rain and it came to pass at the seventh time he said behold there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go up and say to him prepare your chariot and get you down that the, that the rain does not stop you and it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel the Lord bless his word in Jesus name our year is our year of greater glory and the Lord showed us that there is going to be speed when we set those papers on fire we saw the snail the demons of delay arrested which means speed will come somebody say amen the meaning of that to us is we are not going to sit down and wish that it may happen. We are going to step into the place of prayer and fasting and enforce the fulfillment of the prophecy. We shall enforce the fulfillment of the prophecy. Somebody say the loudest, Amen. So you don't receive prophecy and go to sleep. You will receive prophecy and war with it. That is why, that is why in January crossover we receive the declaration and in january immediately we begin to enforce the prophecies one by one in the course of the 21 day fast and so what is the purpose and power of this fast first the securing of divine intervention two averting impending destruction danger of disaster if there is for example anything the devil planned ahead for you or for us in the year that you are not aware yet the prayers of these 21 days will scatter them all together somebody say louder amen and then the prophecies that god spoke to us already for this crossover all the ones god spoke to you as a person that you have not yet seen in the course of the fast they shall come to pass in jesus name number four purpose and power of the fast is the provoking of divine visitation provoking divine visitation every time divine visitation is needed a fast could catalyze it where divine visitation is needed where the reign of revival is needed whether it is personal revival or corporate revival a fast is in order Daniel where we read in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 Daniel and his people needed God to visit them and he visited Daniel and the people of Israel after a fast in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 13 all the way to verse 14 the disciples were coming they were they went up to an upper room where abode peter james and john and andrew philip thomas bartholomew matthew james the son of alphaeus simon zelotes and judas the brother of james they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication even though the fast wasn't mentioned but it is implied in many ways first of all they were separated from friends separated from everything they locked themselves up in the upper room there was no evidence of how the feeding was going on there but they were all in the upper room praying they were they were separated from everything and in acts chapter 2 from verse 1 while they continued in this prayer in the same one accord suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of this rushing mighty wind clothing tongues like as of fire sat upon their head and they were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance every time you need divine visitation of either over a, a nation over a church over a person over your own life when divine visitation is needed a fast a fast a fast a fast will be necessary somebody say a loud amen or personal revival when you feel your soul is very dry your prayer life is a struggle your worship life is a struggle everything around you seem to be struggling a fast will be needed i remember 
the kind of prescription I gave to pastor some years ago where it says my, my prayer life is not doing well. I'm struggling my life and so on. I say, look, go ahead and take three days of fasting. Don't, don't, don't eat anything for three days. And then uh, go through the book of Acts of the Apostles, the whole of the books, 10 chapters a day. And then, and then for those three days, pray in the spirit for about three, five hours to seven hours every single day, nonstop for, for, the, for those three days. And if you are able to get to do that at the end of three days, let us talk again and see how you fare. It's not possible not to fare well. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. It's not possible not to fare well. So whenever revival is needed, a fast is necessary. That was number four. Number five is the intensification. The intensification of spiritual power. 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 The intensification. Every time you feel weak in power or you feel like spiritual power is needed, you want to shift level in power, a fast will be needed. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 where we read said, They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall renew their strength. They shall increase their spiritual power base. In Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6, he said, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. That is, if you are able to fast according to what I have prescribed, you will be able to lose the of wickedness you will be able to undo heavy bands you will be able to let the oppressed to go free and then of course matthew chapter 17 verse 21 when the disciples could not cast out a particular devil jesus told them this kind goeth not out but by prayer and by fasting somebody say aloud amen so for the intensification of spiritual power power over the church Power in your personal life, power in your family. You used to see yourself running and, uh, 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 and demons are running while you are coming. And now you are see, dreaming of yourself running and people are pursuing you. And you are running and they are pursuing you. It means that there is a, a, a lowering of your power base. And that power base must come up again. Somebody say a loud amen. And so that was number five. The intensification of spiritual power number six is the securing of divine direction the time of the fast is the time for the securing of divine direction the securing of divine of divine direction where direction is needed where insight on the way forward is needed what do i do lord about my business what do i do lord in the marital area i need to know who to marry and i must marry well i'm about to make major career choices what what steps do i take the first period is the period to intensify spirit to, to, to secure divine direction in Acts chapter 13 verse 1 to 2 when the, there was the church that was in Antioch setting past prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manain which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. As they ministered, as they fasted, there was a voice. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6, all the way to, okay, verse 6 and 8, it says, Is, is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Then shall your light break forth. Your light break forth. Somebody say, Amen. 
So the period of fasting is not a period where, okay, let me try and see, let me suffer myself until God will answer me. No. There are definite things. Definite things that are objectives. For somebody seated there, I am trusting God for you. That before this fast is over, your ears will be open to hear God. And your eyes will be open to see things. And your spirit will be open to understand things. If you are saying amen, let it sound like thunder. And so we have securing divine intervention. We have averting impending danger. We have accelerating prophetic fulfillment. We have provoking divine visitation. We have intensifying spiritual power. We have securing divine direction. And number seven. Securing the securing of physical health and vitality. Physical health and vitality. That is why it has been said that to fast is to last. Physical health and vitality. Of course, we saw in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, it said, They who wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall renew their strength. Your energy base multiplies by the fast. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8. 6 and 8. It said after you have fasted, then shall your health first of all your fasting will lose yourself it will lose yourself bands of wickedness on you are loosed heavy burdens are lifted the oppressed go free you break the yoke on your life he said then your health your life shall break forth and your health shall spring forth speedily if there is diabetes in your body hypertension in your body ulcer, whatever it is trust god that these 21 days shall not expire until that thing expire from your life whatever my father in heaven has not planted in your body trust that this is the time they will be flushed off am i communicating even if there was no spiritual benefit just drinking water on empty stomach washes the system it is a form of detox detoxification detox have you heard the word before oh yes the eagle drinks water for 40 days once a year it sheds old feathers water only no food it sheds old feathers gather new strength to fly for the journey ahead people have fasted off cancers fasted off diabetes fasted off hypertension fasted off even ulcer that is ulcer that doesn't allow you to fast This particular year, we shall have multiplied testimonies of healing through the fast. That amen can be better. That amen can be better. And if you are strong, you will be stronger yet. You will be stronger still. Your energy level, you get easily tired. Your energy level is about to multiply. Say it louder, amen. amen. What are the keys to answered prayer? What are the keys to answered prayer? Whether it is answered prayer in the fast or answered prayer generally. What do I need to do in order to fast and be answered? Number one, faith in God for without faith Hebrews 11 verse 6 for without faith it is impossible to please God him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them 
that diligently seek him. Faith in God. Please let me make it clear. Faith in God. Not faith in the fast. Hello? Because it is possible to have faith in the fast. I've seen people done 40 days fasting, no food, only water, no result. I've seen. I've seen people fasted until they brag so much about the fast. I've been able to do so and so many days. I've been able to do do and do. No result. It's possible to have faith in God and it's possible to have faith in the fast. Since I have fasted, something must happen. No, sir. Am I communicating at all? That is why we hear this kind of statement all the time. I have done all manner of fasting, yet no result. I have done, in fact, dry fasting seven days, 21 days. And as you are talking, God was hearing. He said, Ashe, all this while your faith was in your fast. <laughs> Ashe. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Listen to this. So what does it mean to have faith in God and not faith in the fast? That is possessing a revelation of God's word. So strong. That it provoked a conviction. And confidence in God's willingness and ability to do what he promised again possessing a revelation of God's word so strong that it provoked strong confidence and conviction in God's willingness and ability to do what he promised. Say it again. Possessing a revelation of God's word so strong that it provoked strong conviction and confidence in God's willingness and ability to do what he promised. That is, if my faith is in God and not in the fast, then why am I fasting? My fast is an expression of intensified desire. It's an expression of desire on fire. I am not fasting to change God's mind. God is not changed. I am fasting to focus my desire and focus my faith expectation. Somebody say amen. Is God speaking to anybody at all? So as we go on in this fast, at least, if not today, tomorrow, let one scripture be strong enough at the back of your mind as to the reason why you cannot be turned down. For example, call unto me, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, and I will answer you. You think over it. You meditate on it until it is real to you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you knew not. 
Lord, on the basis of this word, I am seeking you. And I cannot be denied. So, our number one key to answered prayer is faith in God. Number two, the forgiveness of sins. Psalm 66 verse 18. He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and 2. He said, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So the ear of God will not hear the prayers from a heart of sin. The ears of God can never hear those prayers that come out of a life of sin. The forgiveness of sin. As we step in through this season of this fast. Lord, is there anything that has the possibility of hindering me? Is there any limitation, any character flaw, any lifestyle, anything? I ask for mercy. Because the devil is called the accuser of the brethren. He said, Lord, that man is not worthy for whom you should hear. The forgiveness of sins. That was number two. Number three is the forgiveness of others. The forgiveness of others. Mark chapter 11 verse 24 and 25. Mark 11. It says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying, including fasting, forgive. If that prayer is not going to be useless, forgive if you have ought against any that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses if you stand praying forgive there are people you have not forgiven but you are not aware ask the holy spirit to bring it up to remind you he remind you forgiveness does not mean be friends that's not what it means. It means release. Vengeance is mine. Leave it in the hands of God. Am I communicating? Because people battle with forgiveness because they don't know what it means. Oh, that man used to be my friend. We went everywhere together. Forgive me. Him means I should become friends with him again and be going everywhere. No, 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 no. 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 If your hand offends you, you cut it off. All right, but after you have cut off the hand, don't keep quarreling with the hand. Just face your life. Am I communicating? If you stand praying, forgive. Forgiveness is one of the number one hindrances to prayer. No wonder God was speaking to husband and wife. He said, dwell together according to understanding that your prayers be not hindered. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Ensure that you are together. Likewise, see husband dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being here together with the grace of God, that your prayers be not hindered. That is whatever happens between you and your wife, where they, 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 uh, uh, sleeping with malice and these things. He said that your prayers be not hindered. Very, very important. When the devil wants to attack your prayer life and attack answer to prayers, he begins to create cause and maintain offense around your life. Someone say amen. Someone say amen. Someone say the loudest amen. amen. You see, there are some people, instead of being angry with them, You should be excited 
for what their action did for you. Hello? You should be thankful. Somebody said, I am grateful to God for all the people who said no to me because they gave me the ability to do it myself. Am I communicating? We experienced something during this construction. I hope I'll be able to give an example that cannot be easily traceable. Where there's no way I can give, <laughs> but there was some, one of the people who was meant to do something for the project and the cost that he implication that he gave to us was um, practically not reasonable and we had about maybe one week to time 10 days there about and this looks like the only th the only where do we go from here the date of dedication is fixed by the way, there are many things that was not completed before the dedication. Eh? A few things, a few things. For example, our toilet partitions and the things, several things within the toilet is still on the way. The majority of the lighting is still on the way. The original seat that should be here, this was, there is seat that we imported that that has dunamis on it. That one hasn't arrived. Hello? So, there was one of those situations like that. <laughs> there was one of those situations like that where something needed to be done. And somebody gave us such an unreasonable price. So that forced us to look for alternatives. We caught an alternative within a few days. An alternative came to us. That's what it was. That's right. An alternative came to us sent by God that I don't know how to quantify the price difference. That is if this one was 500 maybe this one was 50 or 100 or something it was it was it was it was unbelievably different better alternative more permanent more lasting more durable originally i was angry with the man who gave us the first terrible price? I spoke to him on phone. I'm sure he has never heard such a voice in his life. <laughs> Say, why do you want to take advantage of a people like this? By the time I feel you should consider yourself privileged to be part of an of a big project like this. People like you are looking for opportunity to say my my, my own thing is involved in this project, and here you are trying to make unusual money out of us i'm sure he has never heard such a voice like that by the time we got this very powerful alternative i sent them to tell him thank you <laughs> i'm from today till tomorrow i am happy with him that is not pretext Maybe God used him to say no. So that we can find the real deal. There are some people we are angry with that we should be thanking. There are some people that God used to show us the nature of man. Say, this man, I use his behavior to show you what human being can do. Let his life be a lesson as to the nature of humanity. Thank him 
for being used for such a revelation. Not that they behaved well, though. When, <laughs> not that they behave well. You know, the Bible says Jesus could not commit himself to man, for he knew what was in man. Maybe one man showed him. <laughs> That's the last verse of John chapter 2. Showed him. Praise the Lord. So, tonight, now I'm taking so much time because this is the foundation. That's John chapter 2. And Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man. So there are some people that they have been used to show you what man is. Maybe it's your relation. You gave him money, he dealt with you. <laughs> you say, build, build me a house. He bought many cars. <laughs> and God used them to show you how to behave. So, Lord, is there anybody around my life that I need to release, I need to forgive? Show me. Let me forgive them. There are people who have the ability not to forgive people, to forget things. You need that ability. So that you can last longer, you can fulfill your destiny. Because offenses will daily come. Somebody say amen. That was number three. Number three is the forgiveness of others. One is faith in God, not faith in the fast. Two is forgiveness of sins. Three is the forgiveness of others. Number four is one we haven't handled in a program like this before. It is the winning, okay, call it the bearing an establishment of fruit. The bearing and the establishment of fruit is a, a quiet and a silent key to answered prayers. John chapter 15 verse 16. John 15, 16. Look at what he said. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I have also ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. So that whatsoever you ask. Whether it's at the place of fast or the place of prayer or the place of tonguing. Ask the father in my name. He may give it to you. What is the meaning of fruit? Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. Explain the meaning of fruit. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. So fruit is soul winning. Maybe this is the reason why most pastors, especially if those who are evangelistic minded, who will never close a service without an altar call, that God hears their prayers for themselves and he hears their prayers on the behalf of others. Am I communicating? This should be a major secret. One young man testified here the other day. He's part of the evangelism team going out now. A, a contract in nine zeros met him on the evangelistic field. They called him, come and collect your paper. He said, I'm coming. I'm still at evangelism. I will come back later. That whatsoever. Now, what, does, what is God saying? He's saying that the matter of souls, human beings, they concern me. They bother me. I am bothered. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. He said, God is not slack concerning his promise. As some people count slackness, but he is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Somebody said, I think it was um, Maurice Cerullo or T.L. Osborne, who said that the heartbeat of God 
in medicine with there are first and second heart sounds when you look, listen with the stethoscope lob dub lob dub lob dub lob dub like the same physiology and in internal medicine but that the heartbeat of god is souls 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 that if you listen to the heart of god he's crying for souls this is how it works he said if what is bothering me is bothering you I will take what is bothering you and handle it. He said, I am concerned that people are dying and go, going to hell. If you will make my concern your concern, what is your own concern that you are bringing to me in prayer? I will handle it. So for this year, Apart from fasting and praying, we are deliberately inculcating soul winning as part of the assignment for the fast. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a card. I gave instruction that while we are presenting our expectation before God, we'll present the card as well with the minimum of a soul weekly that comes with us that will be established in church he said i am not asking you only to win souls i am asking you to monitor them to stand that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain when you do that ask me anything i am committed can we give god a trial this time around I believe that he will hear us when you have done what you haven't done before you will see what you haven't seen before so let's combine the absence of food plus the intensity of prayer plus the eliminate plus faith in God plus the removal of sin plus the forgiveness of our offenders plus the winning of souls and the establishing of the same within the month of january weekly weekly and then endlessly if i want i mean i don't go anywhere until i give altar call soul winning is part of my life permanently and i try and i'm and i'm happy god hears me he, he answers prayers i don't i don't pray i've never prayed for money since i came to know god money personal money if you see god you ask him Money is what I have never prayed for. Car is what I have not prayed for. House is what I have not prayed for. Not since I became a pastor. Before I became a pastor. He answered all of them. Plus, plus, plus. But I know what to do. Part of what to do is being committed to him and hit the road on his behalf. Somebody say amen. And we are going to do that. And we are going to see answers without a doubt by the mantle of God with which I preach this year shall be a different year that amen is too paralyzed can you say believers amen I prophesy to somebody here today divine intervention in any area of your life where you are trusting for intervention where you are trusting for a turnaround is released in the name of Jesus Christ. Every danger and every disaster and every destruction that the devil has packaged for you this year that is, is organized for you or your family or your loved ones within this 21 day fast, it is scattered and dissolved. The prophecies of this year will not tarry they shall be accelerated i prophesy divine visitation revival spiritual power everyone who has been under any form of oppression this season power is released for you anybody who is needing direction what to do next step to take direction is released for you in the name of jesus